Hello again everybody. So in this video I'm going to talk about what actually happens when you fit an aftermarket exhaust system to a fuel injected bike. Uh, now this does apply to all fuel injected bikes. Some fuel injection systems may be more complicated than others but the very basics of how they work are going to be the same. So when you fit an aftermarket exhaust system, particularly if you change the downpipe, uh, which is this part here on the system, uh, to a larger diameter or different length or anything like that, it changes the characteristics of the engine. Um, particularly, it also um, changes the air-fuel ratio, because even if you have the standard air filter, changing the exhaust will change the way in which the exhaust gases exit and the amount of gas that exits the cylinder. Now, this allows effectively more fresh air to get into the cylinder and if you don't change the fueling to um, compensate for that basically you end up running lean. Um, now some people will probably just turn around and say don't worry about it the lambda sensor the oxygen sensor and the exhaust will compensate for it. Now this is true to a point and I do want to make that clear true to a point not exactly true. So. What you need to understand, we'll, we'll just very, very quickly talk about how the fuel injection system works, um, particularly on these smaller engines like 125s, 250 and things like that. So what you've got here is what's called an N-alpha um, fuel injection system. And what that means is it takes two things into account. It takes um, throttle position, which is alpha, and revs, which is N. Uh, it looks at those two things, and then it has a map on the ECU. And that map is basically like a dictionary. So what normally happens is the, EC, um, the fuel injection system will go right. The throttle is open this much, and the RPM is this high. And it will go into the map, and it will go right. That throttle position, that RPM, that's how much fuel I need to put in. And that is how, the, how it decides how much fuel to put into the system. Now obviously, when you've got a, the standard exhaust on, that amount of fuel is correct. But, when you put an aftermarket exhaust on, we've changed the airflow, but that map doesn't know that. So this is where the oxygen sensor comes in. So the map doesn't know that we've changed the airflow characteristics. But, because we've got this sensor here, the oxygen sensor, that sensor tells the ECU, whoa, hang on a minute, I know you've put this much fuel in, but as it turns out, there's actually a bit more air in the system than we thought, so we're going to just make it a little bit richer to compensate for that. Great, that's perfect. Except, that, that only works under what's called closed loop. Now closed loop is, there's two ways that a fuel injection system works. It works on closed loop and open loop, and it switches between them seamlessly. Now closed loop, which is the system I've just described where it says, well hang on a minute, there's more air in the system, so we're going to add more fuel. That only actually works under certain conditions, and those conditions are generally at lower to mid um, power, so, you know, not really getting on it. As soon as you start getting on the power, as soon as you start approaching wide open throttle, anywhere from sort of 70-75% throttle onwards, you go into what's called open loop. Now, the open loop basically still works in the same way, it still looks at the throttle position and um, revs and, and finds the fuel from the map, but it completely ignores what the oxygen sensor is saying. In open loop mode, so at wide open throttle or, or any time you're getting on the power, it basically just gives you the fueling that the map says and ignores everything else. Now the reason it does this is because closed loop where it actually listens to that sensor is designed to make the bike run as economically as possible and as environmentally friendly as possible. So it, it basically it uses that oxygen sensor to try and keep the air fuel mixture uh, as perfect um, a mixture as possible to get a complete burn to reduce emissions and things like that. When you start getting on the power the reason it goes into open loop and ignores that sensor is because with the standard exhaust on open loop actually runs slightly rich and obviously that's because if you're demanding power you actually need a slightly richer condition than you do under lower um, sort of power demands so it switches to that open loop and ignores that sensor and just gives that set amount of fuel but as I've already explained because we put a larger exhaust on or whatever or freer flowing exhaust we've actually made that rich condition now lean 
Um, it now obviously it depends on how much bigger a exhaust you put on but generally speaking especially if you've got a smaller bike like a 250 or in this case a 125 a lot of the aftermarket exhausts are at least twice or nearly twice the diameter of the original and um, mine mine looks like about 1.5 times the original diameter of the um of, of the stock exhaust uh, on the inside now so obviously you know We've now gone from being rich at wide open throttle to being lean at wide open throttle, which causes, um, in my case, it caused uh, fuel starvation, which meant that as soon as I started getting up into the sort of, uh, you know, past sort of 75% throttle, the bike just would hesitate and not actually um, respond as well. Um, it seemed like it was a bit more powerful, you know, at lower, um, at lower uh, power demands, but that's because the sensor was actually compensating. But beyond that, when the sensor stopped compensating at 70, 75 percent throttle, that was it. You know, fuel starvation not really running very well. So that's what actually happened. So if anyone tells you that the um, lambda sensor or oxygen sensor will compensate for an aftermarket exhaust, they are only right to a certain degree. Um, now, obviously, as I've said before, if you have a larger, more complex motorcycle, more than likely it will have more sensors. I mean this is a very basic fuel injection system, you might have a more complex one. But the basic principle still remains the same. And and also the thing is on a on a larger capacity bike, so say if you've got a thousand cc bike and you only really poodle around on it and, and don't like sort of really get on the power, chances are you won't notice any difference swapping out your exhaust and not remapping it or anything because you're not getting into the conditions where it goes into open loop. Um, I mean, you are because the bike actually is in open loop um, during startup and things like that, and there are certain other conditions where it goes into open loop. But for the most part, you're kind of not. So, so you might not notice it as much. But as I say, on a small capacity bike, you really do notice it. Now, as far as what you can do about it, that's the tricky thing because if you have a more popular bike, like a um, like a uh, Yamaha R125, or if you have a larger capacity bike, like a 600 or something like that, chances are you can either have the ECU remapped to, to um, you know, basically correct the fueling for the exhaust, or you can usually get a, like a, a piggyback um, fuel command unit, like a power commander or something like that. Um, as I say, there are a couple of 125s that do have these available and you can remap things like some of the KTMs, some of the Yamahas and things like that. But the vast majority of 125s, generally speaking, can't be remapped and, and the Suzuki Van Van is a classic example of that. You cannot remap this. There is no aftermarket support, there is no power commander, no uh, fuel um, unit, so y you can't basically increase the fueling on this bike, which causes a problem. So there's two things you can do, um, if that's the case. Obviously, if you can have the bike remapped, that's always the preferable thing, but if you can't, there's two things you can do. The first is obviously go back to the original exhaust system, but who wants to do that? So the second thing you can do is to actually add a bit of resistance into the aftermarket exhaust to kind of try and bring it a bit more in line with the uh, original. So just create a little bit of back pressure just so that the, um, the fueling riches up a tiny bit. Um, now that's basically what I intend to do with this. So I am, in the next video, I'm going to be um, going over, because I'm going to fit a catholic converter, because uh, I need to do that anyway for the technical test that I need to have the bike go through um, to get it registered on check roads. And I'm going to be slightly adapting the baffle and the exhaust as well. Um, as I say, just to add a tiny bit of resistance. It's still going to be more free-flowing than the original. It's not going to be as restrictive as the original exhaust, and it's still going to sound good. Um, but the goal is basically just, as I say, to try and get it to richen itself up a little bit so that it's not suffering that fuel starvation and it's obviously not overheating and, and various other horrible things that happen um, if you're running too lean. So there we go guys, that's, that's just a very brief um, explanation of what actually happens when you fit an aftermarket exhaust to a fuel injected bike. Hopefully you found it useful. Um, I have spoken to a number of people about this, I have done a lot of research on it and I have, um, I should also um, just quickly um, 
a shout out to the guys over at the Suzuki Van Van owners um, page on Facebook. Uh, those guys are very helpful in working this information out as well. Um, so yeah, that's it. I'm going to leave this video here and in the next video we'll go over modifying the exhaust um, and obviously I'll do a little thing of how um, effective that has been. Uh, so as always, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a like. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel. Go check out my other videos and for now, I will see you guys again soon.